us, Master, that we may know. Does the poet or the farmer the most consciousness show? Who contributes the most? The farmer who sows the golden grain? Or the poet's words of joyful refrains? The poet who with his parchment toils? The farmer who writes his poem in the furrowed soil? Both are living works of art. Both hear the infinite song in their heart. How too can we the poetic perspective gain? The poetry flows when we release the pain. From judgment our pain comes to be. When the moment's perfection we cannot see. Each moment in fullness everything contains. There is nothing lacking. Thus, there is nothing to gain. When food is conceived, life is lost. Where is the poetry when there is such a cost? Many the illusions about the food that you eat. The belief of nutrition being an insurmountable need. A sacred ritual is how it should be seen. A communion with self through another being. How then, Master, can it be that from the need to eat I can be free? Food is only needed when there are unsung songs of the heart. It is not nourishment, but inspiration it imparts. When in surrender to existence's flow, the freedom from the need to eat, you shall know. When our lives in surrender are fully lived, what benefits then shall eating give? As all else you experience, it awakens within the inspiration for the next notes you must sing. Eat then in silence, that you may hear the feelings food evokes, that your steps may be clear. A guidance it is for the inspired life. Softly it whispers, light as a sigh. What shall I do, Master, if I cannot hear? Though the mind may not know, to the body, it shall be clear. Tell us now, Master, of the worlds of the dream, the place where we go at night when we sleep. Much time we spend there, yet unreal they seem. Awake or asleep, both are a dream. For in your endless existence, they are images on a screen. Of what does the screen exist? And how can we be free? Of imagined building blocks, which consist of light and frequency. Tools are they, not the prison they see. Tyrants they became because you believed the dream. What is the difference between our sleep and state of awakening? The sleep in which you travel like pilgrims in the night is the soul's homecoming. 
The awake state of the day is the body's domain. And what of the spirit? Where does it reign? In the time of our dreaming or the wakefulness of the day? When sleep is so deep that no dreams do you keep, no images remain, when you awake, then you have journeyed into spirits' states. How do we release the ties that bind, the belief in their realness held in our mind? In the day, upon the stage you play, know it is unreal, but act it is for enjoyment. Let lightness fill your heart. As you close your eyes when nighttime falls, journey not into the mirrors, the dream worlds that call. Dissolve the character and masks you hide behind. Return to the timelessness in which you reside. then, Master, shall this be done with intent, and by remembering you are one, like a current in the ocean of shoreless seas, without ending nor beginning have you ever been. What is holy, and what is profane? What shall we worship, and what shall we disdain? Holy or profane, but the flickering of light and shadow on the imagined fabric of time are they. Is it not wise to shun the murderer and revere the sage? Shun the notes of life that are not yours to sing. Seek the inspiration that the sage may bring. But know that both have equal worth, for one brings order, and from the other, chaos is birthed. Chaos, when from an eternal perspective seen, is but the destructuring of what has been. But why must destructuring occur without grace? Why, in the beauty of life, must violence take place? The forceful change, violently wrought, breaks stagnant patterns of beliefs that are taught. In fluid surrender and a trusting heart, wherever you go shall violence depart. When there is no aspect of life we should give more value to, when asked to choose, what shall we do? The choice that is yours to make will inevitable see if your mind is clear and your heart free of needs. What can ease the burden of man? A change in perspective and attitude can. The burdens he carries are made through time. Live fully in the moment. Leave the past behind. See through the eyes of your eternal being and the bumps on the road will be less than they seemed. Should we withdraw from the complexity of the crowds and the man-made societies? Whenever you live in duality, 
and you think one pole is more valuable than the other can be, you bring opposition by strengthening polarity. Depth of living comes from complexity. Its challenges bring vitality. Stagnation could come from simplicity. When both are valued equally, how should we combine them in harmony? Cease to strive, outcomes to achieve, that awareness may grow of the details you see. To the complexity of the day, they bring the beauty of simplicity.